Okay, so we're going to continue with the case study theme. So Kate is joining me up on stage, and she's going to talk about um, the ANZ Centre. So talking about a variety of subject areas, permeability, <laughs> diversity, and flexibility. Did I get that right? You did. Fantastic. You missed that connection, but we won't hold you to, okay. hold you to that. Okay, I'll, I'll leave you to tell the full story. Um, yes, sir. Okay. So, yeah, a uh, big mouthful, all those four topics. You know, so I'm covering all my bases here. But um, essentially what I'm here... Let me just get my stuff working. Yeah, really, this is the um, the ANZ story and our story of change. Um, like my colleagues in Macquarie um, and a lot of the others presented here today, I'll I'll scoot through this um, quickly. I'm w a lot of what I'm saying um, is not uh, new news to uh, to many of you, but hopefully, it'll give you a bit of a context um, around ANZ and some of the learnings we've gone through with our with our new facility and our pace of change uh, within our organisation. Okay, so we were coming off, you know, a very traditional base, 175 years, um, a very old traditional bank, like many of you in lots of very normal uh, staid commercial environments, all very vertical, all very small floor plates, um, all very traditional siloed and, and much of what we know about the commercial workplace. In Melbourne, we had grown into 13 sites. We were all over the place. We'd grown organically. Um, the colours which designate different business units, so unlike the Tom Macquarie who had the advantage of testing out with one, we had them all over the show. Um, and as I say, very traditional. We needed to go to a much more rationalised opportunity, and my predecessor, a lady called Jane Hamilton, had the vision of foresight to really tackle change straight on. Um, and she anticipated um, us finding a location, um, getting a team of some of the best of the best in the design and workspace occupancy um, environment. So DEPW, Haskells, Lend Lease, all came together as a very collaborative team and said, how do you take that history and that vertical, isolated, siloed mentality and actually create a campus environment? A campus environment that not only um, is a very different physical environment, but also embodies your values, um, opens up diversity, connectivity, and a lot of those words that I had on the first slide. If you're going to look for that kind of space, and we were looking for space for 6,500 staff um, into that campus environment, where did you find it? And in Dockland, uh, in Melbourne, that was in Dockland. Uh, the space we had is, uh, the, the site we developed is uh, about 130,000 square metres. The actual workspace itself is about 85,000 square metres. Um, and for those of you that know Melbourne, that's the equivalent of a Rialto on its side. So Rialto being one of the tallest buildings in Melbourne. So the permeability aspect of my presentation today is really about how we saw this very large floor plate actually being part of the community, how we vetted it through, how we wanted to bring people through, and how we wanted to open up ANZ as a bank. So moving away from our very historic traditional bank image and actually becoming some, uh, much more connected, not only amongst ourselves, but to our community um, and to the environment in which we work. So the... the the floor plate works, or the, the upper ground floor, as we call it, works from linking the building that's very permeable from Collins Street all the way through to the Yarra River. And we're very lucky to have the curvature and the river frontage. Basically, people came through uh, a port cochere or a portico that mirrored the shape of Collins Street, um, came up through the grand stair, and basically have the ability to, to um, travel through the building or come and work in the upper ground floor. It's a very open space. It's a public space. It was designed uh, not only to give free flow from the street through into the river, which is um, constructed as a boardwalk and a public open space. Um, the use of timber actually was homage to the maritime setting. The use of the bluestone connecting us to um, Melbourne, the city of Melbourne, and obviously a lot of the glass and the transparency associated with trying to open up ANZ to be a new generation of bank under a new COO and a new CEO with a very different open, transparent feel. So not only did we open the floor plates horizontally, but we also opened vertically, and the building has two large atria that actually serve to connect all the way through. So when you come into that public space, which is totally accessible to anyone and everyone, um, you can come in, you can sit there, you can work wirelessly, you can feel the buzz, of the, the buzz and the energy of the bank, and you actually uh, get to experience the environment as it's used by a lot of ANZ people. That obviously, you can see there the quote, you know, gave us very much a, a town hall connected uh, community. The floor plates, as I said, the horizontal planes, whilst linked vertically, these very large open floor plates that were quite difficult for our staff to um, get their heads around, having come from very vertical 
small floor plate of environments. The um, real challenge, the, the building was designed anticipating change and the senior leadership who were involved with the design of the building um, laboured long and hard over whether we should do the Big Bang and impose the change of how people might work in this new environment along with the new environment and the very new setting of Docklands. And it was felt that being a very conservative bank, having come from a very conservative background with a long history, that probably that was just a bit too much to take. So we moved the workforce, the 6,500 people moved from all their various Melbourne homes and they came to this building, but they came in a one-to-one -one desk room despite the fact that the building had been designed to enable um, activity-based working and flexible working and that's something I'll come to as the next journey of our change. The other thing I think is quite interesting um, when we think about all the things that have been said today is that whilst we're talking about workplace and people's perceptions of it and experience in it and how it may change a very open, transparent ap appearance in the workplace. So I don't know the answer to that, but it's an interesting thought as we've gone through the day and something I thought would be useful to throw up and think about that greater consideration of the built form and, and the role it plays in society as well as in brands. So as I said, for most of our people, it was a really big journey going into the new site. Not only were we flinging them down at that time, they thought to the, de the desert of Docklands, which is actually, as many of you know, and those of you who will go down there tomorrow, you know, is actually a, a very vibrant part of Melbourne now. now. But they were changing from, the, on the, the bottom of the sheet, you see the sort of work plates that they'd been used to working on, and then the work plate that they were moving into, and just the very different culture that that was going to embody for them. So um, moving away from being able to have their isolated you know, Friday night drinks very much with their environment on their floor plate in isolation to an environment where they were going to have to start to share and think about space in a whole different way. The floor plates were designed, bearing this in mind, the floor plates were designed to encourage that collaboration. The collaborative space to workspace ratio was about 48 to 52 um, in the building. There was a consideration of the access to natural light, of bringing the enclosed spaces, the collaborative spaces, nearer to the internal atria, letting the workspaces and the more private spaces push towards the external environments of the building, recognizing the small green squares you see are the, the small private pockets that you might want to actually engage in individual work, um, but essentially also looking at the vibrancy of the hubs, the circulatory routes, from the very public open space of the commons in our upper ground floor area, through the building, through the semi-public spaces of the hubs, then the social and the collaborative meeting room areas, and then onto the floor plate. So it took a while. Sorry. We also recognize with a workforce of 6,500 people, you need a lot of diversity. Um, and diversity was built through different types of themes and finishes in the building, different types of meeting rooms, different types of collaborative spaces, so that people could. It was very much designed that people would find some spaces they liked, some they hated, and some they just accepted. Um, and one of some of the very interesting behaviors we've seen as we take an occupation and we've been in the building nearly two years now, um, is that people only now are just beginning to feel that it's totally all right to go to that really sunny yellow um, hub that I like to have my lunch in, even though that's not adjacent to my floor or near my neighborhood. So it's quite an interesting dynamic when you give people all this opportunity for them to break their old habits and actually feel comfortable using the facilities that are available for them. So as you can see, we also saw that the building had an impact on our, this is a quote from our um, former COO, who was very much um, involved in, in the delivery of the building, but we all were, um, and our CEO was delighted with the fact that it did, the building has actually started to change the collaborative nature of ANZ. So the building in and of itself is actually changing the culture towards a more collaborative, far-reaching um, knowledge-sharing environment that very much Mike Smith, our current CEO, wanted to engender. He was coming with what he perceived to be a fairly fresh approach to banking with the Australian market, and he wanted ANZ to move from its traditional roots to thinking of itself as a super regional bank. And so this building was part of that journey into getting people to take on that connection, diversity, and collaborative approach. So not only did we recognize that we needed to change the perceptions and the practices of our own staff, but we also needed to consider how the workplace would have an impact on our customers and obviously our shareholders and the public at large. Um, and you have to think that through. And we were very lucky with the design teams and the con developers and, and the, the consultants that we had, the workplace consultants that were involved in a very collaborative way with the design of AM Center 
and just wanted to think these things through at a very early stage. Mm. It's meant that our, what we call our customer facing spaces offer a variety of diversity and connectivity and all sorts of types of, of settings. Um, we had again, the transparency was there, so there was no real secrecy about the bank anymore. Um, our visitor center, we recognized that with our green agenda, we had to, we, we, we should offer people the opportunity to come and visit us and understand more about why we developed what we developed. And we have a, a dedicated visitor center in the upper ground floor, which is uh, technology touch, touch screen technology. Um, and we too have an auditorium, which is where we now do some of our results and, and welcome in not only the public, but our shareholders. Um, having moved into the building, we did some initial follow-up um, to understand if, anecdotally, productivity being, as I call it, the golden ticket, how do you measure whether you're more productive or not? We did some anecdotal surveying to find out if people felt they were more productive. Um, on sense, about 50% anecdotally said they did feel more productive. Most of those had moved into um, H33. We're currently going back with groups um, and doing other surveys, and that's associated with our flexible working. But we will actually be gauging productivity again, so it'll be interesting to assess our new data against some of the data we did from our old, lo our old locations before we actually moved into ANZ Centre. Because the building had been designed to be working flexibly and we perceived that by sort of back end of 2010, we started to move into the building in 2009, people were very much had, ad had adopted to the, the transparency, the openness, uh, the free flowing um, design of the building and had, were, were, as I say, had that comfort to use the stairs, had the comfort to go to locations they particularly liked, even though they weren't immediately adjacent to their, particularly er their particular area. Late 2010, we saw the opportunity. We felt that it was time for change to really harness the true um, capability of the building that was right. ANZ talks about flexibility. Our approach to flexibility, um, we call it our space. Um, and it's really driven, again, I'm sure many of you in the room looking at this slide think, yeah, 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 that all sounds very familiar. There's nothing, there's no magic formula here. It really is about maximizing the value of the asset that we've invested in. But we felt the bank was right for change. Had we introduced it at the beginning, I think with the scale we were looking at, it would have been far too hard. Would have been, we would have bitten off more than we could chew. Uh, now we're, we're able to introduce it. And it's interesting how going back and reverse engineering it through the building, um, the things that we're discovering and learning. So we've triangulated data up the gazoo, as I'm sure you can appreciate, as banks we do. So we have Turnstar data, we have occupancy data, we have um, utilization of desk data, we have technology data. So we triangulated massive amounts of data and got to a position where we could clearly see that there was on average about 800 to 1,000 desks on every, any given day that weren't being used in the building. So clearly an opportunity to maximize um, the, the capabilities both of the building and of a flexible working approach. We take a bottom-up approach. We sit very much with each of the business units and try and understand how they perceive they can take on flexible working. Um, as we talked this morning, many of them are very resistant to change, the fear of the unknown, despite the fact that they've all come through a, a come through unscathed and with a lot of enjoyment through the experience of moving into a very different environment that they also thought they would, would be the end of the earth for them too. So we're giving them the double whammy. We use very simple techniques like this to show that actually did you were you aware of how much vacancy was amongst that group? If you see if we consolidate that vacancy and there's still vacancy between those two groups that are, have now consolidated, you know, are you appreciative of the type of neighborhoods that that can free up, the type of space? It enables you to create different neighborhoods with adjacencies next to groups that you can work far more productively with. And it makes you fight much more aware of how some of the subordinate spaces to your space, what are they and how they actually work. At the beginning, we see that our staff are becoming far more cognizant cognizant of the types of spaces that are available to them. So they've got used to the hubs, they've got used to the stairs, they've got used to a lot of the social spaces, but a lot of the workspaces now is what we're drawing their attention to and how they too can have an influence on how they work. We're basically looking at a neighborhood approach. So we have the neighborhoods in the open floor plates. They range anything from about 20 to about 80 staff. Um, probably about the 40, 50 neighborhood model works very well. And what we're finding now, and I think because of the journey we've been on in getting people used to change, um, people now as they're adopting flexible working practices are coming to us and saying, actually, we'd like to reconfigure some of this space. You know, can we swap out some of the furniture for different 
different types of cleaning tables or could we move to an air a neighbourhood that has access to larger meeting rooms versus a number of smaller meeting rooms. And so we feel that we've probably paced it right, um, slightly biased view I'm sure, but in terms of giving people that ability to understand what the opportunities are with the space and how we want to work with them to make sure that we do make the space as productive as possible. And what we're doing now in some of the neighbourhoods is going back in and changing out some of the furniture or changing out, adding in new technology. And you know, as I say, credit to all the designers and the developers of the, of the, of the building. Um, it's able to cope with those changes, um, to make the changes in technology and to take on uh, the different types of workspace um, relatively cheaply. As I said, ANZ is on this journey because very much ANZ Centre was our footprint and our guiding light to how we might take our learnings from that building and apply them to our super regional agenda. And we're very much doing that. So we have uh, Sydney, and some of you who are down from Sydney will know it at Castle Ray Street, Pitt Street, we're developing a new building and that's picking up many of the learnings from ANZ Centre and saying how do we reapply these now vertically without going back to some